Hello, I am Kenneth Opal, and today I'm going to be reading from my book, Silverwing. Chapter 1. Shade. Skimming over the banks of the stream, Shade heard the beetle warming up its wings. He flapped harder, picking up speed as he homed in on the musical whine. He was almost invisible against the night sky, the streaks of silver in his thick black fur flashing in the moon's glow. Airborne now, the beetle was a whirl of shell and wing. Shade still couldn't see it with his eyes, but he could see it with his ears. Caught in his echo vision, the insect hummed and glowed in his mind like a shadow edged in quicksilver. The air whistled in his flared ears as he swooped down. Breaking sharply, he scooped the beetle up with his tail membrane, flicked it into his left wing, and volleyed it straight into his open mouth. He veered up and away and cracked the hard shell with his teeth savoring the delicious beetle meat as it squirted down his throat. Very tasty. Beetles were far and away the best food in the forest. Mealworms and midges weren't bad either. Mosquitoes, they didn't really taste like much. Gauzy, a little prickly at times, but they were also the easiest to catch. He'd already eaten over 600 this evening. Something like that, anyway. He'd lost count. They were so slow and clumsy, all you had to do was keep your mouth open and swallow every once in a while. He spun out a web of sound, searching for insects. He was starting to feel full, but he knew he should be eating more. His mother had told him, she'd been telling him for the past ten nights, he had to get fat because winter was coming. Shade grimaced as he snatched a mealworm from a leaf and gulped, as if he could ever be fat. He knew, though, that there was a long journey ahead of him south to Hibernaculum where the whole colony would spend the winter. All around him in the crisp autumn night, he could hear and see other silver wings streaking through the forest, hunting. Shade stretched his wings luxuriously, only wishing they were longer and more powerful. For a moment, he closed his eyes, sailing by sound alone, feeling the air caress the fur of his face and stomach. His ears pricked suddenly. It was the telltale drumming of a tiger moth in flight. He tilted his right wing and wheeled, locking on to his prey. If he could catch just one, everyone knew how hard they were to catch. And then he'd have a story of his own to tell back at Tree Haven at sunrise. There it was, chopping its gossamer wings, rocking clumsily. It was laughable, really. He was almost upon it. And maybe this wasn't so hard after all. He cast a net of sound around it and drew in his wings for the plunge. But a hailstorm of noise tore apart his echo vision, and in his mind's eye he suddenly saw not one, but a dozen silvery tiger moths all veering in different directions. Shade blinked in confusion. The moth was still in front of him. He could see it with his eyes. Somehow it was scrambling up his echoes with its own. Use your eyes, just your eyes now, he told himself. He flapped harder, coming in fast, claws extended. Wings billowing, he pulled back and scooped his tail forward to catch his prize when the tiger moth simply folded shut its wings and dropped straight down out of his path. Shade was going too fast and he couldn't stop. His tail just swept right around underneath him and he flipped. Clawing air, he plummeted for a split second before righting himself. He cast around for the tiger moth in amazement. Above him, it fluttered along placidly. Oh, no, you don't, he said. He beat his wings and climbed swiftly gaining. But another bat suddenly flashed in front of Shade, snapping the tiger moth into his mouth. Hey, cried Shade, that was mine. You had your chance, said the other bat, and Shade recognized his voice instantly. Chinook, one of the other newborns in the colony. I had it, Shade insisted. Doubt it. Chinook chewed vigorously and let the wings flutter from his teeth. This is fabulous, by the way. He made exaggerated smacking sounds. Mm. Well, maybe you'll get lucky one of these nights. Runt. Shade heard laughter and saw that there was an audience, other newborns fluttering down to roost on a nearby branch. Just wonderful, he thought. Everyone will be talking about this for the next two nights. Flaring his impressive wings, Chinook made a graceful landing, planting both rear claws on the branch and swinging upside down. Shade watched him with a mixture, mixture of envy and rage as the others shifted to give him space. There was Jared, who was never more than a wing beat from Chinook. He'd fly above the tree line in a lightning storm if Chinook told him to. And there was Yara and Osric and Penumbra. They were always together. Shade didn't want to join them, but flying away now seemed like even more of a defeat. He settled on the branch a little ways off. 
His right forearm smarted from his mid-air flip. Runt. He hated that name, even though he knew it was true. Compared to Chinook and some of the other newborns, he was small. Very small. He'd been born early. Mum wasn't even sure he'd survive. That's what she told him later. As a baby, he was tiny and furless, floppy-skinned, and so weak he could barely cling to her fur. She'd carried him everywhere, even when she went out hunting. When Shade's feeble claws began to falter, she would keep hold of him gently with her own. Drinking her milk, he'd gradually grown stronger. Within a few weeks, he could even eat some of the mulched-up bugs she caught. His fur started to grow, sleek and black. He gained weight, not a lot, but enough. And everyone in the nursery roost was surprised when he took his first leap and stayed aloft, wings churning for a few whole seconds before having to make a clumsy and inglorious landing on his chin. He would live after all. But all the others in the nursery colony were growing faster than him, even the females, with deeper chests, broader wings, and stronger arms to power them. Chinook was considered the most promising newborn, a skilled flyer and hunter. Shade would have given anything for Chinook's body. He certainly didn't want his brain, which was about as active and useful as a pebble. Chinook, that was incredible, Jared said enthusiastically. The way you, you swooped down on that moth, amazing. That was number two tonight, Chinook said. Two, said Jared. No, you got two tonight, that's... His admiration seemed boundless. Incredible! Shade ground his teeth as the others muttered their agreement. Chinook sniffed disdainfully. I'd have got more if the hunting was better. It's better in the south. I can hardly wait to get there. Oh, sure, agreed Jared, nodding furiously. Of course it's better in the south. It's amazing. You can get anything to eat up here at all. I can't wait to get down there, too. My mother says we're leaving in three nights, Chinook went on. And when we get to Hyba, uh, Hyber, Hibernaculum, murmured Shade. Yeah, said Chinook, not even glancing at him. It was as if he wasn't even there. Chinook, Shade, was used to being ignored. He wondered why he bothered talking at all. He hated having to watch Chinook hold forth and act like a king. So when we get to this place, Chinook went on, we sleep in these really deep caves with these huge icicles hanging from the ceiling. Stalactites, said Shade. He'd asked his mother about it. They're not icicles, Chinook. They're made of minerals dripping from the ceiling. It's not frozen water. Chinook ignored him and kept talking about the icicles in the caves. Shade grimaced. Chinook wasn't even interested enough to get things right. He had no curiosity. Shade doubted he'd even seen ice. Shade had, for the first time just last night. Close to dawn in the creek where they drank, he'd noticed a translucent skin on the water spreading out from the bank. He couldn't resist testing it making a low pass and smacking it with his rear claws. On the second try, he felt the ice give way with a satisfying crackle. He'd noticed the other signs of winter coming over the past weeks, the changing brightness of the falling leaves, the sharpness of the air, but the ice was what made him realize winter really was coming, and it made him anxious. He didn't like to think about the coming migration. Hibernaculum was a million wingbeats away and he harbored a secret fear he wasn't strong enough to make it. And his mother must have been worried too, or she wouldn't be telling him to eat all the time. And even if he got there, the idea of sleeping for months filled him with dread. They wouldn't be feeding at all through the winter, just sleeping, their bodies glinting with frost. And what if he couldn't sleep? What if he just hung there in the cave with everyone else fast asleep around him? It was a stupid idea anyway, sleeping for so long. Such a waste! Maybe other bats could sleep that long, but he knew he couldn't. It just wasn't possible. Sometimes he found it hard enough sleeping through even a single day. There was so much he needed to do. Practice flying, learn how to land better, hunt better, catch a tiger moth. He needed to get bigger and stronger. And he didn't see how he was expected to do all that while sleeping away the winter. I can't wait to meet my father, Chinook was saying. Oh, me either, Rasha agreed. And then everyone was talking about fathers, repeating stories from their mothers and sisters. At the moment, the silver wings were split in half. Treehaven was a nursery colony where the females reared the newborns. Farther to the southeast, the males spent the summer at Stonehold. But once the migration started, they'd rendezvous and make the long journey south to Hibernaculum together. Shade listened silently, feeling his face harden wishing they'd all just shut up. 
My father's huge, Chinook was saying over the others. Chinook never waited for anyone to finish talking. He just barged right in and everyone always stopped to listen. She couldn't understand why. The only things Chinook ever talked about were how much he'd eaten or which of his muscles was sorest from his latest heroic feat. My father's wings, he told them now, go from here to that tree over there and he can eat 10,000 bugs in one night and he's faster than anyone else in the colony and once he fought with an owl and killed it. No bat can kill an owl, Shade snapped. It was the first thing he'd said in a while and the anger in his voice surprised him. My father did. They're too big. Shade knew Chinook was just boasting, but he couldn't let it go. Strong bat can do it easy. No chance, said Shade. You don't know everything, runt. You calling me a liar? Shade felt his fur bristle in defiance. He knew he was being taunted, and he knew he was about to say, Yes, yes, you are a liar. But the words were snagged in his throat like dry shells. A few sharp notes of bird song carried through the forest, and they all stiffened. That's the dawn chorus, said Penumbra, unnecessarily. Everyone knew what it was. I guess we should head back. Chinook and the other newborns rustled their ring wings in agreement, ready for flight. Yeah. Go ahead, said Shade with a casual yawn. I'm just gonna take a peek at the sun. Their reaction was so satisfying. He had to wrinkle his nostrils to keep from smiling. They all stared at him in silence, the fur between their eyes ridged with consternation. What are you talking about? Chinook scoffed. You can't look at the sun, said Yara, shaking her head. Well, I thought I'd give it a try, said Shade. It was the first and most important thing all newborns were told. There were other rules, too many as far as Shade was concerned, but this was the one they were taught most fiercely. You must never look at the sun. It was as simple and final as that. It'll blind you, said Jared. It'll burn your eyeballs right out of your head. And then turn you to dust, Osric added, not without relish. Shade shrugged with regal indifference. And, and there's the owls, said Penumbra fretfully. She looked around. We really should get going. In the distance, Shade could hear the mothers calling their children back to Tree Haven. And then his own mother, Ariel, her mistakable, unmistakable voice. Shade! Shade! He felt a quick tug at his heart. She would worry. And he was already in trouble from a few nights ago when he landed on the ground, breaking another rule. Just to get a closer look at a glistening spider's web. It was just a few seconds, but he'd been caught and scolded ferociously in front of the other newborns. Just a quick peek, he told the others, glancing at the brightening sky. It won't be long. You are so weird, said Osric. But there it was, that look Shade had been craving. A look of grudging admiration. He's not going to see the sun, said Chinook irritably. He's just saying that. I'll tell you all about it when I get back to Tree Haven, said Shade breezily. Unless you want to come, Chinook. It was a delicious moment of silence as Jared, Penumbra, Yara, and Osric all looked expectantly at their hero. A challenge had been issued and Chinook knew it. He gouged one of his claws into the bark. Well, never mind, said Shade cheerfully, ready to light from the branch. Wait, said Chinook. I'm coming. And then more fiercely, I'm coming with you to see the sun. And that was a little bit from the first chapter of Silverwing. Hope you enjoyed it.